Well, today's the day. I've got 50 hours on the B2601, so let's do the 50 hour maintenance. So the primary items for the 50 hour service include oil change and oil filter change, hydrostatic transmission oil filter change, and the hydraulic oil filter change. We're not gonna change the hydraulic oil except for what we lose when we change the filters, which I understand is inevitable. So let's talk about what I picked up at the local Kubota dealer. Because the next service interval is not for another 150 hours, I told the dealer I wanted an oil that would get me through all four seasons here in the Northeast. So he recommended 15W40 motor oil. I've got the engine oil filter, which is the smallest of the three, the hydrostatic transmission filter, which is the middle size, and then the hydraulic oil filter, which is the tallest of the three. They're also marked clearly HST filter, uh, suction filter, which is for your hydraulics, and of course the engine oil filter just says oil filter, but that's the easy one. I also picked up a couple of quarts of UDT2 hydraulic oil, which I understand is what these units are shipped with. Uh, it's a synthetic oil, so we'll continue with that. I'm hoping I don't lose too much, but I picked up two quarts just in case. Now, not knowing what to expect from these factory installed oil filters, they may be super tight. I don't know, but I've got a couple of different style oil filter wrenches just so I'm prepared with that. I've got some nitrile gloves, which are always nice to keep your hands clean. And of course, a nice big oil drain bucket. I like this one because it has a nice big wide opening to catch any spills that might happen. And also I'm prepared with my 9 16ths wrench to take out the oil plugs. That's right, two oil plugs in this oil pan. And I did say 9 16ths. I tried a 14 millimeter and it was just too tight to get on there. I tried a 15 millimeter and it was a little loose, so it turns out that 9 16 is the Goldilocks socket that we need for this project. And of course, nothing is better than old kitchen towels for spills because they're made out of cotton, super absorbent, and we were gonna throw them away anyway. Now make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna show you another tip that's not in any of the service intervals, but I think it's really important. So let's start with the engine oil and oil filter because I think that's the easiest of the three filters. So we'll start easy and work our way up. Now, if you have the front end loader attachment on your B2601, you probably wanna remove it or at least raise it up out of the way so that you can work on the side panel. But if you do raise it up, there's a safety interlock located under the seat. Let me show you that right now. So when you're seated on the tractor, right behind your right calf is this safety interlock. You simply take this lever, you slide it over and drop it down. And what that does is it locks your stick so that you can't bump your stick or anything that would potentially drop your front end loader. Good little safety feature. All right, so let's raise the hood. And the oil filter is accessed behind this panel, which lifts out easily. No tools, lift the front up, slide the back out, and there's the panel. Now when you take that panel off, you'll see the filter located at the front end of the engine there. It does have this radiator hose that's pressed up against it. I've heard some complaints about that. We'll see if that adds any difficulty to unscrewing it. But first we're going to go underneath and remove the oil drain plugs from the oil pan because we want to drain as much oil out of the engine as possible before we unscrew that filter to prevent as much leaking as possible. Now before you go underneath, it's good practice to just Remove your oil filler cap from the top of your engine. You can just loosen it, and what that does is it allows air to get into your engine to help the oil drain. I like to remove it completely and set it aside where I know I won't forget to put it back on and tighten it. I'm gonna leave this oil cap right there so I don't forget to put it back on. I'm going in. I've got my paper towels. Got my cotton cloth for extra absorbency. Got my 916 socket. Oh, and I'm gonna bring this little action cam so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Here I go. If I'm not back in 10 minutes, call for help. Okay, so here are the two drain plugs on the oil pan. There are two because there's a drive shaft that runs right down the middle. 
So it's really great that they have one on each side to fully drain the oil from this pan. I'll start, how about I start with the one furthest away so I don't drip all over myself. Smart. Got it. Now, there is, I believe, a copper washer that you want to make sure you don't lose in your oil. Looks like it's coming off. Yeah, I'm making sure it's coming off with the plug. And unscrew. Get ready. Go. Nice. Should have had my paper towel ready, but that's it. Just wipe that off. And there's the copper gasket on there. Set that down. Take the next one off. There we go. Again, the copper washer is coming with the plug. Loosen while holding a little upward pressure and go. I have to say it took me like 30 years to learn how nice it is to work with vinyl gloves or nitrile or rubber or whatever you get, but it's pretty nice. So the oil is draining, pretty much drained. So now we'll go over to the oil filter and we'll take that off. We'll leave the plugs off and just let that continue to drip down while we're working on the filter. Before I start to mess with this filter, I'm gonna get the new filter ready to go. So first thing is just to peel the plastic off. And then the other thing we do is just wipe a little bit of clean motor oil around that gasket. So next time we go to take this one off, it will not be stuck to the engine block. So I've got the oil here. And then I just dip a little on the tip of my finger. And just wet that gasket down a little bit. All right. Put the lid back on here, set the oil aside. Let's get started. Now, to prevent as much spilling as possible, I'm gonna take one of these old cloth towels, see if I can jam it up underneath here. Not much room. Let's first see if we can do this by hand. Cannot. I'm going to use my nylon strap wrench because this one can fit straight in rather than having a handle which might be tough to get to around here. This one can stick out so we'll see how that works. This is really tight, especially with that radiator hose pressed right up against it. But apparently that's part of the design. Everybody seems to have the same complaint. I felt it move. Yep, it's moving. All right, that worked really nicely. Put a nice big dent in the filter. Now I'm ready. Got the other filter within reach for hopefully a quick change. is definitely not a great design. 
All right, so that's on. Didn't barely capture any of the spill. A lot of it just ran down the frame. I'm just gonna put this on here and give it a little bit of a snug. All right, so now we'll go back, put the plugs back in the oil pan and add our oil, which takes 3.3 US quarts. I bought a gallon, so I'll have some left over. Snug on those. Snug but tight. Okay, now we'll add the oil and move on to the transmission filters. Hey, if you would do me a favor while I'm under here, I can't reach that subscribe button. If you would just tap that for me and click that notification bell and maybe hit the like button, really appreciate it. So far, so good. Okay, the dipstick is located on the right-hand side of the tractor. Now the filter is going to take a little bit of oil because that filter is still empty. So what we'll do is we'll put the oil fill cap back on, start the tractor, let it run for a moment, shut it back down, check the oil again. Did you hear that? I never get tired of hearing that sound. I love it. Now, while you've still got the hood up, there are a couple other things you can check out. Now, one thing you should check frequently is this radiator screen. It simply lifts out, and as you can see, it grabs particles of weeds and things like that. So this is something you just wipe off, put it back in place. But look at your radiator too, and make sure that Nothing's gotten behind this screen and stuck in the radiator. Mine looks nice and clean. And you drop that back in. The other thing is your air filter, which is located on the right-hand side of the engine, again, as you're seated at the tractor. This has a couple of clips on it. You can lift it right out like this. Slide the cover off, and the air filter just pulls out. So take a look at your air filter. Wipe off any heavy debris. This looks pretty good. This is not something that gets changed very often. In fact, the owner's manual talks about actually washing it with soapy water, letting it dry, of course, and then using it again and again. So just something you want to keep an eye on. I like to also wipe off the inside. Because there's an additional screen on the inside here that keeps the really small particles from getting in. Well, this stops the smallest of particles, but I guess that's a secondary catch-all. Then you just slide it back in place. Make sure it's seated all the way against the back. Put the cap back on. Make sure this little drain plug here is facing the bottom. That way if any water were to be sucked in, it would drain out of the bottom here. Lock that one in place. Lock the bottom one. And then just snap it back in place. just like that. And while you're under here, it's a good idea to check your antifreeze coolant levels as well. This is fine, but it certainly is a little bit low, so I could top that off. 
but that's something to always keep an eye on. Well, I'm going to call the oil change part of this project complete and successful. We'll close the hood, then we'll move on to the hydrostatic filter and the hydraulic filter, which are all done from underneath. Oh, hey, fancy meeting you here. So, on the right side, if you're seated at the tractor, is the hydraulic oil filter. On the left side is the hydrostatic transmission filter. I'm going to start with the hydrostatic transmission filter because, from what I've seen, a lot more oil is lost when you change the hydraulic filter. So we want to stay as clean as possible for as long as possible. Let me fire up this other camera angle. So you can watch what I'm doing. Now I've got my rags ready. I've got my oil filter wrenches ready. I've got the oil filter prepared over there with a little bit of hydraulic oil around the seal. And first we'll try it by hand. Just in case we get lucky, no such luck. And we'll use the old nylon strap wrench again. And here it comes, just like that. Here's the new filter, confirming the same size. Get my oil pan underneath and get ready for the quick change. I'm going to drop this one right in the oil pan. Oh, something snapped. What was that? Yeah, that one's not too bad dripping. I actually heard a little pop when I took that filter off, which is odd. Like maybe there's some pressure that builds up in these transmissions. All right. Again, I normally do this by hand, but I'm just going to give it one little extra with the wrench because it's kind of tight under here. Difficult to really get enough leverage. All right, shall we go to the other side? This is the one I've been dreading. Really lost hardly any hydrostatic oil from that first one. Okay, so this is the one. We'll start by just cracking it loose. Loose already, good. Rest can be done by hand. Again, I've got the new filter ready to go for the quick change. And I will take the old one off with my right hand and move in as quickly as I can with the new filter. Ready or not, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Quick, 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 quick. Oh, look at all that oil coming out. New one in. Didn't need to lubricate that O-ring, did I? That's it, again, we'll snug it to be safe, just a little, good. A 
it doesn't wipe down any excess hydraulic oil. I'm going to say that was not as bad as I was dreading. We lost maybe half a quarter or so, but that's okay. We have oil. All right, we are done underneath. Let's move back up top. We are at the back of the tractor now, and you can see that the hydraulic oil dipstick is clearly marked here on the left. Now the hydraulic oil fill is this little cap located right above the top link. It's a little rubber cap that pops off. That's where we'll add our hydraulic fluid. All right, I've lowered my three-point hitch just to get the mechanism out of the way to make it a little easier to check the oil and fill it. So here's the hydraulic oil. This is so clear it's hard to see, but if you use a clean paper towel and just touch it to it, then you can see where the oil level is. See, if I touch the dipstick to the paper towel, it leaves a mark exactly where the oil is. So we're clearly low by possibly a quart, which I happen to have right here. Take the rubber cap off, make sure that the area is clean. Now this, I think I can do without a funnel. He said with confidence. Okay, that's about a half a quart. I do not want to overfill this, so I'll check it. Probably going to take the rest of the quart. It's good. It's perfect. But, like we did with the engine, let's start it up, work the hydraulics a little bit, and then check it again. I'm going to put the cap on, though. Nice. actually pretty low, so we're going to have to add the rest of that quart and maybe a little bit more. Definitely good to work the hydraulics up and down a few times. Make sure all the oil is circulated through the filters and through the system. Now, let's briefly talk about grease, and then I'll show you that one bonus tip that I was talking about way back at the beginning of this video. Unless you have the front end loader attachment, this tractor doesn't have that many grease points. There's one underneath which is attached to the brake pedal. I'll show that to you right now, and then a few in the back. So basically, if you look right below the brake pedals, you can see that grease fitting right there. Let's go to the back. Now in the back here, you have a grease fitting on the top link. You also have another grease fitting on the three-point hitch leveler on that right-hand side. Now one tip with these when you grease them, don't grease it until you see grease coming out of the threads. That means you fill this entire cavity up. Don't ask me why I know this. You fill this entire cavity up, and then when you go to turn the top link in, it's so full of grease, it's difficult to turn it in. So you just want to put some grease in there. I would recommend screwing it all the way closed and then back open some just to get grease on the threads. And same thing with the adjuster on the three-point hitch on that right-hand side. Now there's some additional greasing that you want to do by hand, and that is all your three-point connecting points, your ball sockets here. I don't have my gloves on now, but what I do is I, with my gloves on, I just grab some grease, rotate these balls around, wipe grease all over them, and make sure they move freely. I also put some grease on the three-point hitch, 
Someone once said to me, Greece is your friend, and that's true. It can also be your enemy. One thing you'll learn quickly is that tractors are dirty. When you're hooking up your attachments, you rub up against areas and you get grease, but that's just the nature of having a tractor. Now, how about that final tip I was telling you about? That has to do with your rollover protection system or your ROPS. And when you fold down your ROPS, I like there to be some resistance where this just falls down. Imagine if you take these pins out and the thing falls down and it hits your head. This is really heavy duty. So, it's good to snug your ROPS up a little bit. Now mine happen to be 7 eighths on one side and 15 sixteenths on the other. Maybe there's a metric equivalent. If not, good old metric adjustable works well too. Just like to snug those up a bit. Then there's some resistance on your ROP, see? And they fall a little more slowly. I'm gonna tighten that up a little bit more even. That feels good. See, it stays right there. It would still fall, but it's pretty slow. That may also help with some of the rattling that you hear when your ROPs are up. I did something, this is another bonus tip. I added some weather stripping to the top of my ROPs here where it meets the connection point. And that keeps it from rattling as well. So, that does it. Thanks for watching, thanks for stopping by. Remember to please, please like, share, comment on the video, hit subscribe, tap that little bell so you're notified when I put out new videos. It helps me out a lot because I know that you're engaged and you're interested in what I'm doing. So I really appreciate hearing from you. Thanks a lot and have a great day.